yeah, the physicality could well be the difference in there. We could see the difference in, in size and, and strength at the at the weigh-in yesterday. April Hunter, I think, is, is looking at being a, a career welterweight. Has boxed her first two or three at the 147 limit. Comes in at 152 and a bit. She drops her head so low. She's got to be careful, Vig. Because someone with the class of April Hunter, she will find that uppercut eventually. Straight one, two, a nice return there from Cloudy Vig off the ropes. Stiff right hand, but Hunter back on the front foot, just looking to try and set something up, maybe to the body, just tapping upstairs. Minutes ago on the clock, four twos, remember. Good shot there. To start the right hand round the side, wasn't having much luck with the straight shots, will she? Changed the angle and had a bit of success, Big just tucking up now. Definitely started to feel the weight of those shots, and McNally said naturally she is a good puncher. But she just, uh, don't think he, she really understood just how conditioned you have to be as a professional fighter until she started working in the gym with him. We know that he's a taskmaster. Double left hook from Hunter putting his shots together well here. Big's in a little bit of trouble with 25. On the clock in the third, returns with a nice right hand. That's stiff jab, the Hungarian. Action heating up here in round number three. <laughs> Credit to Vic, she's still there, she's having a go. As we know, she's a, a circuit fighter. She's not there really to uh, upset the odds, we don't think. But she's been in with Savannah Marshall and in Cedaru. She's not afraid to get in with the very best of them. At higher weight divisions than April Hunter. She'll have no fear here. So in time, I think the knockouts and stoppages will come. Yeah, and as we saw just then, she's, she's happy to kind of change the angle of the right hand, arc it around the side, just digging those right hands into the body. And there's confidence in her work here. There are the uppercuts you asked for, Dan, with 35 seconds to go on the clock. As you say, when she's got a little bit more distance to get these fighters out of there and a bit more time to do so, maybe she will. But it looks as if Claudia Vig is going to see this one out. She's digging in here. The Hunter putting her shots together. She knows that the finish line is just over the horizon. Slips off the line and then puts the lead up a cut through the middle. 15 on the clock now. Good finish this from April Hunter. A month and four. No, Joe McNally will be pleased with his uh, conditioning here. The work rate's gone up and she's boxed four rounds at a really good pace. Yeah, and the fit fitness le levels have looked really well. I, I liked it, but I was impressed with Big just under a little, fair bit of pressure there at the end. What I like with about it as well in that round was, and all through the fight, was just a little step out of range when Big was trying to attack. And that, that's, that's good energy in the legs and good energy in your feet to be able to do that, to be able to push in and out of range. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of action here in Newcastle, England, we go to referee Victor Lachlan's scorecard. It reads 40 to 37 for your winner. She's still undefeated, April Harlock Hunter. Torero won two of his last four, but those two have both come by knockout. He's got solid fundamentals and will look to box more than Manev did against Akers tonight. But five wins against 11 defeat, coupled with the fact that he wasn't able to get a run out during the pandemic, tells you he's not expected to win tonight. The man in the opposite corner has high ambitions, a solid amateur background. Of course, weighed in at 225 pounds. He, he may sort of creep up to around 235. You wouldn't want to see him pack on muscle unnecessarily, especially at the expense of some of the other attributes that he's got. Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke this week uh, similar to Fabio Wardley. You know, a lot of blood there, sorry, Dallas. There a lot is, of yeah. Blood. Cut to the left eye, I think, Paul. Yeah, it is already, already starting to go into the eye of Alvaro Torreira. Referee's having a quick look at that. Minute 10 to go in the first round. He's landed a few right hands, Dakers, already, and I'm not sure. It's probably one of those that's caused the damage. He's not afraid, as you say, to hold centering and try and stand and trade with Dakers, whether that's a sensible thing or not. Dakers covering most of the return fire, getting through with those stiff shots. This is a good opponent for Solomon Dakers. It Dakers. is. Look, he's ambitious, so I think it's probably best to stand as close to Dakers as you can. I think stand at arm's length. It is, it, you know, it really isn't a good tactic at all. It'll, it'll get picked off and those right hands are looking so dangerous. So probably the best advice would be for Torero to get close and try and mess and unsettle Dakers. 
Oh, right a whipping hand. right hand there, wasn't it, from Solomon Dakers again round the side of the glove. That seems to be his money punch here. He's put a fair bit of spite into these shot shots now, Dakers. He was feeling out in the first round. He's really putting the power into these shots. Yeah, it looks spiteful, doesn't he, when he lets his shots go? Yeah, knocking Torreira off balance when he lands those clean. And he's seeing a lot of what's coming back at him too. It's making him dangerous with a minute 30 still to go on the clock. And Dakers really just getting warmed up here in Newcastle. Stiff jab down the middle. Just took a, a shot that he thinks slightly below the, uh, the belt line, but it's more around the hip area. Digs in with uppercut through the middle, left hook to the body. Blood pouring down the left-hand side of the face of Alvaro Torreiro. Yeah, certainly cranking up the uh, the work rate too. Starts to bring the left hook into play, and that has hurt Torreiro. Oh. Putting the shots together, the referee steps in. Well, was it early? The referee can see more in the eyes of the Spaniard than, than we can, and he certainly hasn't protested. But no sooner had he started putting the shots together, the legs of the Spaniard dipped, and the referee decided that enough was enough. Yeah, some journey for Cyrus Pattinson, an exercise in determination and patience for the 27-year-old Southpaw from just north of Newcastle who's brought down for sparring with Jorge Linares and his preparations for Luke Campbell. He is, I think, physically going to be a different beast to Yoncho Markov. It's going to be a case of boy versus man here tonight. To drop down a level uh, yourself, and I think going straight back in there for someone that's represented their country, country and is a decent... Uh, fighter will, will do you the world of good. You won't have to go looking for your opponent, which he's ha not having to do against Marquez. Marquez. And of course, there's development and then there is regression occasionally. And already he's been caught with a few lead right hands by Yoncho Markov. Just slips off the line there and works with counters to the body. Patterson. Good variation, Chris, there. Really, really good head body through two lovely hooks to the body. Good work from Cyrus Patterson. Good opening round. One of the most competitive debuts I've seen in a long time, isn't it? You, know, you see an opponent like, like Markov coming in here to win, and I think this will do Patterson the world of good. When the Olympics come on, it'll probably break his heart because he'll watch fellas at his weight that he's beat doing really well, and having this pro fight, having got the ball rolling on your professional career will, will soften the blow, in my opinion. Markov almost went a bit Emmanuel Augustus, the bit drunken master on him there, just dropping forward and throwing some unorthodox shots from slightly strange positions with Pattinson, just took his feet back with him. I think talking, oh, you know, I was just going to say, I think talking in poker terms, he showed his tail when he did that and he looked really fatigued and tired. Makes it to his feet, but there's a long time to go in this round, a minute 40 for Cyrus Pattinson to start putting his shots together. Marco just lunges forward with a right hand, but he was wildly off target. Pattinson, compact, picking his moment, rips to the body. Markov tries to come back at him, feeling perhaps attack is the best form of defence here, but he may get caught with something in the crossfire. Been hitting him a lot to the yeah, body, Pattinson. Body yeah, there you go again. A lovely right hook to the body, just off a, a combination upstairs, has dropped Markov again. He's desperately trying to make the referees count. Will he find it to his feet? He can't. He's shaking his head and the referee knows body language when he sees it, although he rose to his feet, he'd had enough already. A second round knockout for Cyrus Pattinson on his debut, a long, long time coming. Just occasionally you look at statistics and realise how arbitrary they'll be in the fight coming up. This won't be about height or reach, it'll be about bombs thrown and who hits the target. Safe money is on Babich, but we know, as we said, he can be wide and he can be wild. If Chambers can pick something early, has the power to do some damage, but he simply has to put a dent in Babich upstairs or down to have a chance. From the first belt, he's going to be right up against it here because Babbage fights in one way and one way only. It's crude, it's roughhouse, but so far, so good for the Savage. One, two, Chambers has gone over, the referee rules it a slip. Not like he was throwing the one, two when he went yeah. down. Chambers landed a good shot in and then, and then tripped. That was a good right hand from Babbage. Well, as I say, it'd be very unlikely if we use the full six rounds here in Newcastle. Babbage already head hunting. Chambers short uppercut on the inside. Don't blink. Oh, oh left hook over the top. Oh, wow. and ropes kept him up there. Chambers will be administered a count because the referee will deem that the ropes were the only thing that separated him from the canvas there. 
And we're still two minutes ten on the clock. Alan Babich has a long, long time to put his shots together. And the moment he's touched Chambers on both occasions, he's looked troubled. Looking for that uppercut on the inside, but he's been caught in the crossfire here. He does have to watch it, Chris, that, that uppercut. He does keep his elbows wide when he's letting his shots go. Fast start from Babbage, though. And Paul, he's got to try and smother and, and just cause a bit of disturbance to Babbage's rhythm He's here. got to stop trying to fight with him, Chris. He's got to just get on his bike and box and stay safe and stay out of trouble. The round's gone now with the, with the knockdown. Just, just take your time, try and recover, re recuperate. Stay close to him when you're inside, stay away from him when you're on the outside and just try and survive the round. It's a big shot, he stumbles and he keeps himself up with the ropes. And the referees just give him a little bit of respite, it's not a, a, an unfair advantage, he's just helped the fighter out a little bit, I like that sometimes. I can hear Matty Hatton in the corner shouting, first minute, first minute, and, and I know what, what it is. Weather the storm for the first minute, the last two minutes, Babbage seems to cool off, puts a lot into the first minute, oh, good shot. Oh. Oh, he's hurt here, Damien Chambers, and, and he falls to the floor. Two chopping shots on the inside. Well, the referee says no knockdown. I think we all disagree with that. Maybe it was his legs that gave way, but it was the punches that caused him to be off balance, and he is in trouble here. And that plan of first minute to weather the storm hasn't gone to plan, and Babich knows that stiff jab. We don't often see the lead left hand from the Savage. It's normally wild hooks from range, but trying to box himself into distance and Chambers doing well and the smart thing to just shut that space down, smother, push the Savage back. Lovely lead left hook from Chambers again and well, as you said, Paul, just signs that Babbage has got a good first good right hand in from Chambers. Yeah, it's just, you know, both fighters are obviously feeling the pace. Babbage has thrown a lot into it, but it's also... Oh, oh left wow. hook! Spins him with the left hook. Chambers hangs on to the ropes, but he is finished here. Referee takes one look at him, it is all over for the Central Area Cruiserweight champion who fought so bravely and tried to mix it at points, survive at points, but the force of Alan Babich, the power, the relentless pressure and the heavy-handedness almost looked inevitable at points, didn't it? Valencia Capac, Southpaw likes to work away, he's got that fluid rhythm of the Mexican fighters, sometimes British fighters find so difficult to cope with Thomas Patrick Ward, the younger man by four years but I think this is going to be a very very interesting contest for him oh big shot. long left hand from Eddie Valencia and as I said to you on the ring walk throws that looping left hand down by the hip and Ward didn't see that at all they do fight in a different rhythm these Mexicans slides off the line you'll just see him take his hand outside that jabbing hand and launch that left hand from down low and already just caused a little bit of wariness from from Wardy there Ward just loses his footing momentarily, and Valencia just tries to capitalise. Again, just pushing him back, trying to create space with those forearms and elbows, but that's a nice combination from the Brit. He just needs to be a bit sharper, Valencia, if he wants to have any success. He's getting close because Ward's allowing him close, but when he's there, he's not letting his hands go fast enough, and Ward, as a result, is in and out, buzzsaw style, in and out fast, too fast for, for Valencia to land, and, and really classy, elusive skills there to get out the way. Really impressed with him this round, a very, very good round for him so far. Lead right hand straight down the middle. Textbook against the southpaw and then exits beautifully. Well, Valencia it just looks and nodded in acknowledgement of, of the skills as Ward starting to get into full flow here. Oh, what a left hand down the middle has just put Thomas you know, Ward over. You know what? It, it, it's just a balance thing that it, he's not hit, but it is a knockdown. Just on the move to his left hand side as the left hand landed will get a slightly better look at that. Has that slowed him down at all? Or is he okay and clear headed? He looks to be clear headed. I, I'm, I'm a fan of his and, and I really do hope that he does get his opportunity. He's with the right team as well as need to make things happen at the moment. Matt Truman absolutely on fire and if he's going to have a little bit of leverage from that then it, it, it's going to help get him into that position. But I think what Darren said a few rounds ago, Ward ticks every single box except the power box. He's working away here with Valencia up against the ropes. As the final bell draws a conclusion to another master class from Thomas Patrick Ward. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action here in Newcastle, we go to the judges' score totals. Ron Kearney, 97 to 93. Steve Gray and Victor Lachlan both scored the bout 98 to 92. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. He's still undefeated, Thomas Patrick Ward. Well, very little to choose between them height-wise. At the face-off yesterday, Fonso looked to have considerably longer arms, though. Just says an inch in reach there, but I think it's probably a little bit more than that. We know that Ritson likes to slam that jab in at full length, really, really sits down behind it. There it is again. That's just oh, hurt Ritson to the down. body there. He's hurt Ritson. Ponce digging in. He knows now, and with a minute 30 on the clock, just a sign that the home fighter is oh, hurt. Ritson's hit. really hurt with that shot. Up against the ropes, and the Argentinian knows that his time is now sensing oh. a moment. Steps on Lewis Ritson, who's got his back to the oh. ropes, dipping at the waist, but he's hurt to the body here, and he may have to take a knee. Steve Gray having a good look at him. Got to fight back or take a knee. He's yeah. got, got to get on his bike, fight back or take a knee. Oh. Left hook upstairs, right hand through the middle. Way isn't holding him, got, got to just claim him. Ritter needs to hold him or, or do something, he can't carry on doing this. He's in big trouble here, Lewis Ritson. In that Philly shell stance, trying to get off the ropes here. What a round and what a start from the Argentinian. Ponte's also got to be careful that he doesn't punch himself out. And put everything into this first round. Oh, uppercut. Oh, sinking those in. Working upstairs, and Lewis Richardson just tries to tie that left hand up on the blind side of Steve Gray. But he's not letting up here. He oh. doesn't want to give the Geordie fighter a chance to recover. Risky tactics, but... At the, at the moment, the way Ponce is throwing these shots, with the amount of power and the volume of them, you can see it panning out that way. He, he, he won't be able to maintain this for 12 rounds. It'll take something else for him to maintain this pace at that velocity for 12 rounds. Starting to work the body well himself oh, here. Nice Richard, Lord, for Ponce. Lifting the head up well for those left hooks with the short uppercut on the inside, and Ritson getting caught clean here. Regardless of what he said in between rounds one and two about there being not much pop, he'll certainly be feeling those. Ponce making it rough, making it tough on the inside, draining Lewis Ritson. Left foot counter again from the Geordie, digs to the body from Ponce. Great action in this sure. first minute or so of round number three. coming together on the inside, let's just say Ponce does really tuck down and tight into that shell. Oh, oh right hand from right. Lewis Ritson. Ponce rode it well though. That didn't look like it even registered, did it? Maybe some way he's felt that, just steps off, gets back on that jab. That's what Ritson's done well, which Ponce's been guilty of not doing this round, just kept his shape well all through the, th the first three rounds, even the torrid start that he had, he kept his shape. you mentioned perhaps because he saw the Miguel Vasquez fight and knew that he wasn't going to get a decision on the back foot and maybe he wasn't going to get a stoppage working on the back foot too. Looks like he's feeling the pace this round, Chris, I'm yeah. sorry, Lewis Ritson here. Yeah, absolutely. And Ponce working hard, digging to body and head up the middle, coming round the side too. Once again, Ritson getting pinned to the ropes, that double long right hand really turns the knuckle over. He sends that one down the middle. Is Ritson starting to feel the pace himself, comes back with that three-punch combination, but just not able to put a dent in his opposite man and where we thought he might start to fold. Well, simply isn't at the moment. The distinct pattern that you normally see with Lewis Ritson, he'll hold his feet, tuck up when opponents commit. Once the attack is over, he steps straight in and steals their space, but it's actually being done to him. He's yeah. getting a taste of his own medicine tonight, and he doesn't know quite how to deal with it. He is responding 
in spurts and, and he's landing twos or threes, but as a centre pool, he's getting hit with threes. He's having a good look at him here. He's in real trouble here, Lewis Ritson. There comes Big the, the final bell. Oh, he's annoyed with himself as much as anything. So the business end of proceedings here in Newcastle. And Lewis Ritson, as far as we can see here at the commentary desk, is well behind on the scorecards. Momentum with Jaramillas Ponce. He's being broken up here, Ritson. Oh, he's here. Solid Back to the body. body shot has put him down to his knees. Steve Gray administering the count. Will Lewis Ritson make it? Such a long time in the round now for the hometown fighter. The crowd respond to try and will him through this, but he's alone in that ring. Digs in with two body shots in his hands, and his father has thrown the towel in. He looks no, across he doesn't to stop. it. He doesn't have to stop it. Steve Gray says continue. What a moment, and Lewis Ritson has to dig in and survive here. Ponce, sensing a moment, steps on Ritson. Two minutes on the clock here. What a moment that was. A lifeline for Ritson as Steve oh, Gray throws again. the towel out the ring, but now he goes down again. Still nearly two minutes, and Davy Ritson looks on in concern as the towel is given back to him. Will he throw it in a second time? This is remarkable stuff. He's telling the referee I'm OK, the referee, the referee's listening to him and he looks OK as we've been saying. But a chopping right hand there from Ponce, Ritson digging in, trying to respond, but down he goes again. I didn't think and that was Steve enough, Gray says he's seen enough, and what a moment for that man. Jeremias Ponce moves to 28-0, but far more importantly to him, he instates himself as the IBF mandatory challenger to Josh Taylor.